Hi everybody, I'm Jay Fenichel. In this lesson, we're going to talk about the groove to late in the evening. This, of course, is a famous groove from the Paul Simon song and performed by Steve Gadd. Uh, what's also great about it is it derives from the Latin thing. It comes from the Afro-Cuban world, specifically the Mozambique. So we're going to go over that groove a little bit and explain how Gadd took it and twisted it a little bit to make it sound great for this pop scenario. The first thing I want to do here is break down this Mozambique bell pattern. Now this is the authentic bell pattern and there's only a slight variation that Gad does in it. The first measure sounds like this. One, two, ready, go. Once you have that, let's go ahead and take a look at the second measure. One, two, three, four, one. 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 So let's practice the whole groove and loop it. Now, as I mentioned, that's the authentic version of the Mozambique. Now, what you're going to do with your left hand is a little trickier. Now, essentially, Gad is filling in all of the holes that are being left by that groove. So what you need to practice is anytime there's a hold or a rest, filling that in with the left hand. So just to start, let's go ahead and do that just on the snare drum against that beat. Now, assuming you have that Mozambique pattern together and you could fill on the spaces, that's where you want to start and you want to make that very comfortable. The next thing we're going to do is just work on adding the feet. Now, luckily, the feet are actually going to be pretty easy for this groove. But Gad tends to play this in unison with his feet. So both feet are pretty much stomping out the time. it's time to talk about the variation. So the way we're going to change this groove is to add a five stroke roll to the end. Now a five stroke roll is right, right, left, left, right. Two doubles and a single. One, two, three, four, five. Right, right, left, left, right. Now I'm doing this with a right hand lead. So you'll start and end on the right. Now what I want you to practice doing is splitting that between either your ride or cowbell, whatever it is you're using to ride on, and the snare drum. Let's do that a couple of times, nice and slow and in time. Two, one, two. Two, one, two. Two, one, two. Two, one, two. So if you look at the Mozambique pattern, we're gonna slip in that five stroke roll sticking right on beat three, three and four end, and then one's gonna cross back over to the beginning. So now we're playing the groove like this. Right, right, left, left, right. Right, right, left, left, right. Right, right, left, left, right. Once we have that, the only thing left to do is voice the melody with the left hand around the toms. Okay, talking about the left hand melody, if we do it by itself, You'll be able to hear the sound of it, but it's going to be a little convoluted to try to figure it out. Sometimes I find it easier to just play it against the Mozambique pattern because all the spaces are filled in for you. But just for the sake of understanding how the melody works, let's work on the sound of that. Essentially, you're going to be feeling a normal tumbao pattern, which if you're familiar with the sango and then that type of groove, you have the end of two and four on the bass drum. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. We're going to be doing that across the toms. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. 
that's the basic melody of what we're playing. So you want to try to keep that vibe of high, low, high, low, high, low. It's easy to get confused and lose that melody. Now the other, only other hard thing about this is throwing in that five stroke roll and then ending on beat one, which stays on the floor tom. So he accents that beat one, which brings it into this more of an African type of vibe where you have the melody and then beat one. Want a three four want and three four one a three four want a three four one and it has a really nice round feel to it. So let's just practice the feeling of that. One. Let's practice that a little slower. One, two, ready, and one. Once you have that, the only thing left to do is to put that Mozambique pattern up on your bell, either on your ride cymbal if you're playing the chorus, or on the cowbell or the rim of the drum, depending on where you are in the song. And if you'll notice, that pattern will just be filled in with the Mozambique pattern. Of course, the last thing you have to do is add your feet to that all together. So let's just do the hands first and then bring in the feet. And there you have your entire groove. Now if you work on that, it'll start feeling comfortable. You just got, really got to repeat it over and over again, set it to a metronome, and really try to get it down. It's something that takes a little bit of time because if you're not used to that style of music, it's very broken. It's a little bit linear, similar to the sango, the way we work that out, but it has like its own tribal type of feel to it. So Gad liked to take the authentic styles of Cuban music, which is your Mozambique, and kind of mix it with some African styles and even some Brazilian styles and put them all together into one groove. It breaks the rules of the Latin beat, but really has a great groove to it. Definitely get it down with two sticks first, but eventually you might want to try it with four sticks the way Gad did it in the recording. Now, if you watch him, there's tons of videos of him actually demonstrating this. The way I do this is I start with my normal grip. You notice I have my middle finger on my fulcrum and my index fingers up on top. And I slide the second stick in between my index finger and my middle finger. And I get this. So if you notice that, it makes a little space. Now I could actually control that space a little bit by how far down I bring my, my finger. That works well when you want to play across two different surfaces. the speed it's going to sound like this. So that's going to wrap up our lesson here on this breakdown. And again, I know there's tons of ways to think about this groove and I'm sure there's other videos that break this down and do a great job. I'm sure you can find videos of Gad himself breaking it down, which I advise you to look it up and see how he does it because it's just such an interesting way of applying a simple concept to like a pop thing and making something really different, but very mainstream at the same time. And that's the genius that is Steve Gad. So I hope you guys enjoyed the lesson and I'll see you on the next one.